We're outside of the NCAA Women's Championships in Atlanta, Georgia. It's day two and the prelim session of the 500 freestyle just wrapped up and University of Pennsylvania swimmer Leah Thomas is seated first in the event headed into finals. We talked to three women from Save Women's Sports who are protesting outside of the competition. We are all here with uh, Save Women's Sports. Uh, we are here in support of Beth Stelzer who founded Save Women's Sports on the basis of women's sex and keeping sports single sex to protect women and girls uh, safety and boundaries and right to privacy and fairness in sports. The three women provided us with their stance on the issues and talked to us extensively about why they're here, what they hope to achieve by protesting this swim meet, and how they foresee their work going forward. None of the women that we spoke to had any direct experience with the sport of swimming, but still use their own resources to travel all the way to Atlanta from all over the country. We've all been active on this issue um, even before women's sports became an organization. Right. We've been speaking out um, for women and girls. Right. We're, we're feminists yeah. that care about what happens to women and girls. That's why we're here with women's, Save Women's Sports. I definitely am against uh, what is happening with a man being in the pool, but I also was here to show women my support. You know, these, these women have attempted, the, the girls that are specifically on the team with Thomas have tried to speak out. Um, they've been silenced by their school. They've had a media blackout on them, whereas Thomas has had covers of magazines. I propose the women compete with the women and the men compete with the men. So if you're a trans woman, you would compete with the men because you're a man. Throughout the interview, the three women constantly misgendered Thomas in addition to spreading misinformation and disinformation surrounding transgender policies. We're trying to educate people. We've got some brochures. Uh, <laughs> Having conversations. I would, I would say 98% of the people have thanked us for being here. Yeah. For standing up for women. 98% of everyone being here? Well, anybody who's walked by has has thanked us, yes. Have you um, received any other feedback from people? Uh, yeah, I had one one woman that said she didn't agree. The propaganda behind this movement has been really effective, um, specifically the use of the term inclusivity. Um, however, I think that those who are going along with it, you know, they, they, they're compassionate people. They, they want to be nice. But the fact of the matter is that term inclusivity comes at the direct experience expense of women being able to have boundaries around our bodies. It comes at the direct expense of women being able to say no to men in our spaces and sports. You know, women deserve to have the boundaries around our bodies respected. You know, that's what I grew up learning and that's what I want to pass on to future generations. I want a little girl to be able to say no. You know, I want her to be able to trust her own eyes and ears and trust her physical senses. You know, I know a man when I see one. Um, that is my own basic basic sense perception uh, and I should be able to say no to any man it doesn't matter what he claims he makes about himself um, if I see a man I should be able to say no I want boundaries around my physical body and you do not belong in my space um, and that's what we want to pass on we're trying to give a counter narrative to this very negative space that is a little bit sort of dog whistling. They're, it's a, they're not necessarily actually acting in good faith and having the conversations that really actually like matter. And they instead they use these talking points about fairness to create environments of in, of exclusion without really concern for that for data for the fact that a lot of their arguments are entirely anecdotal. And then they talk about contradictory things that have contradictory mentality of both where like biological essentialism happens and where womanhood, whether femaleness, Please don't, don't, please don't push me. Please don't push me. I'm gonna move away from you. Please yeah. don't push me. So, yeah, so, so we're, we're just here trying to actually provide a counter narrative to this. Because, you know, at, at Georgia Tech, we are a, we are a progressive school, we have a progressive student body, and we and we, su we support, as I said, in the backpack. We support sort of, uh, we, we want to just again be here in support for Leah Thomas, for Isaac Henning. We want to support all trans athletes.
uh, despite the chaos, which is real as a, as a queer trans person is a little bit tough to like deal with, especially since I originally started here on my own and was cornered by a lot of folks. Did you have any concerns about um, Georgia Tech hosting this meet? Personally, I have no concerns. I've so I I grew up in Georgia doing varsity swimming here. I've swam and competed at the Georgia Tech pool. It's a wonderful facility. I also know that the NCAA has been very, very like secure and very supportive of their trans athletes today, which I really appreciate. Um, I do have slight concern about sort of the message, as I said, that Georgia Tech isn't a welcoming place. When folks are seeing outsiders from off campus spreading hateful, transphobic messages. Why do you hate messages, women and girls? Why I do you hate, hate fair sport for women and girls? I, I don't hate fair sports, but we what need is to discuss a woman? about what is a girl? fairness. What is a woman? What is a girl? We play it is a sports gender... with our bodies or our feelings. I, I actually am not going, again, I, I don't necessarily want to like engage in these like conversations while I'm having other conversations. You don't want to engage about what is a male and what is a female when the entire reason both you and we are here is over that issue? So why I, did you come here if you don't want to engage about it? Because I'm not trying to engage with you. What I'm trying to do is well, provide a counter narrative for the when you were yelling at us. First of all, I came here, sat here with my sign. I had no plans to engage with y'all, but then you had four or five of your group you're, immediately you're walk up to me and then start tr start going and trying to have these no, arguments. No, we tried to tell you that you're mischaracterizing this by calling it hate. 